Now, Saudi Arabia has issued an unusually strong rebuke of the United States Senate, rejecting its resolution that blames the Crown Prince for Jamal Khashoggi's murder. The journalist was killed by what's been described as a Saudi hit squad inside the kingdom's Istanbul consular office in October. In a lengthy statement, Riyadh said the resolution interferes in its internal affairs and is based on unsubstantiated claims and allegations. A second Senate resolution had called for an end to the US military support for the Saudi UAE-led war in Yemen. Now, the Saudi Foreign Ministry statement hoped that the Senate actions will not be drawn into domestic political debates, warning it could affect strategic relations. Let's get more on this with Shia Britansi, our correspondent in Washington, D.C. The Saudis are certainly upset at the Senate vote last week and seem to be saying sort of relations might be affected by the decision. It's going to be interesting to see what sort of comments and reaction come from where you are. Right, especially because it's precisely because some senators want to affect strategic relationships between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. That's the point of the Senate resolutions from, from last week. They want those to be affected, and they will still be pushing for more action. However, we should add that as far as this week goes, and, and we are re reaching the end of, of this year's congressional session, we might only see some action only the possibility of some action in the House of Representatives. We know that there won't be a vote in the House on the resolution to end support for the Yemeni war, but there may still be the possibility of some sort of vote following up on the Senate voice, unanimous voice vote, condemning Mohammed bin Salman for the death of Jamal Khashoggi. That may happen at some point this week in the House. So that's the only congressional action that may still be pending this year. I guess what the Trump administration and the Saudis are hoping, though, is that this does all sort of blow over by next year. However, the House of Representatives, the incoming House of Representatives, led by the Democrats, does say this is just the beginning as far as they're concerned. But we may see some members of the Senate think, OK, enough's enough. We care about Iran more than we care about Saudi Arabia, so let's just let this go. So we might see a, a reversal in the congressional emphasis on Saudi Arabia from the Senate back to the House of Representatives. For the moment, uh, Shihab, thanks very much. And of course, uh, we'll follow events with you from Washington, D.C. Now, Sigurd Neuberger joins me on set. He's the non-resident fellow at the Gulf International Forum. Very good of you uh, to join us here on Al Jazeera. Um, will anyone in the Senate really be bothered by what the Saudis have to say four days after the Senate vote? It's important to emphasize that uh, it was inevitable that Saudi Arabia would issue a statement after its strongest rebuke from the U.S. government up to date. What is different now compared to 9-11 is that after 9-11, the U.S. political establishment was... Um, uh, unified when it came to preserving the U.S.-Saudi relationship. Now that we have seen, uh, the difference between now and then is that um, there's a consensus in Washington that the status quo and business as usual cannot continue. So uh, this was a strong message, um, and it was not surprising that the Saudis responded, although it was a uh, watered-down uh, statement that took about four days to come up with. Do you get this feeling that the Saudis are under pressure, they are, or they have their backs in a corner um, and they're trying to find a way of fighting back verbally, politically, diplomatically? A statement like this was uh, for domestic consumption only. Um, one can only um, assume that uh, since these two resolutions passed on Thursday last week that there has been intense uh, diplomatic engagement between the White House and, and the Saudi leadership to try to find a path forward in this extraordinary difficult uh, situation. Of course, uh, that is between uh, the White House and, um, and the Saudi leadership. What we also know in the American system is that there are three co-equal branches of government and one of them is uh, the legislature, in this case the Senate and the House of Representatives, will uh, chart their own course independently of what the White House does. Indeed, and of course, historically one might look at the relationship between Saudi Arabia and uh, the US. And if we look at sort of the, the 60s, 70s and 80s, there was a great reliance on oil as a fundamental factor for why these two countries were very close. Now that America has uh, and the ability to produce its own oil to a certain extent and is trying to pull away uh, in self-reliance, is there a newfound sort of freedom in politics there that politicians can say we don't need Saudi Arabia as much as we did in the past and now there is the potential to break free? I would disagree with that assessment, even though you're correct about the energy dynamics. What is important to keep in mind is that the Middle East remains extraordinarily unstable, and stability in Saudi Arabia is, is a key U.S. priority. 
um, and that is certainly um, how the U.S. government sees it. Now, there's a difference between protecting the stability of Saudi Arabia and uh, personalize the relationship, because the relationship between Saudi Arabia and the United States is between the governments of Saudi Arabia and the United States, and not necessarily between the heads of these two governments. So, uh, given the fact that uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia are at odds, given the fact that there is a humanitarian crisis in Yemen, and given the fact that uh, the Gulf remains unstable, it is uh, imperative for the United States to, uh, to work with Saudi Arabia on a consistent basis. While we hear countries such as Canada, Germany, the United Kingdom, e even some parts of the uh, American establishment saying, we don't need to sell arms, we need to stop our arms sales to Saudi Arabia, is the White House certainly very concerned about this? Because obviously if they step out of the equation, there's Russia and China on the doorstep waiting to get in. Is that also another concern that lawmakers have to have even when they do voice their discontent with Riyadh? It's important to keep in mind that uh, the Saudi military is uh, fully dependent on U.S. military um, uh, hardware uh, and the system engineering. So, in other words, even if they were to find um, suppliers in Russia and elsewhere, it would not uh, match up with the system um, integration. So this is, this is not really, this is more used as a political uh, football, if you will, to, to, to ensure that, uh, that some of the arms agreements remain in place. Well, for the moment, we'll leave you there. Sigurd Norboya, thanks very much for joining me here on set. Thank you.